Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to season number three in Miami. Oh my God, oh my God. How fresh is this? We're going to explore every corner of the city to find out the rarest, the most popular, and the most delicious. <laughs> Welcome to season three of Idiots. Good morning and welcome to yet another day here. We are on Billing Office uh, boat, captained by Mr. Nelson de la Torre. I'm already on track to having a better fishing year this year than last year already. This is my second time out. Right, uh, like as we're kind of going out, like I've never, uh, I've never done anything like this before in my life, but I feel like there's this thing building up as we're kind of going out. And as the guy's like talking, uh, talking us through it or, uh, like prepping us for like what to expect or, you know, how to even fish. So I was gonna go and get something to eat this morning, but I was like, if I happen to get seasick, it's all coming back up anyway, just fucking ride it out. I knew I could cook them, but let's see if I could catch them. <laughs> Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Never point at the fish? Never point at the fish? Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. The second that I saw that fish break water right there, I knew that there was nothing in this world that was gonna get in the way of me getting this thing on this boat and me meeting it eye to eye. Ah! It's running! It's not like it's not like a largemouth bass. No, it ain't. <laughs> it's about 80 pounds. Hey, oh hey. my god. I want it! I wanted this fish. I need it! I needed this fish. It needs to go in the garage mahal. Oh, I got him. I got it. Waistline, waistline. By, by, by the by the belt, by the belt. Right, guys, let me get that tape measure. The tape measure right here. Got it, right here. Oh, get hot. Stretch it out. Stretch out. It's 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 all oh, the fish. Oh me. 90. 90. 98.83, 90. 90.83. 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. Yeah, all right, guys, let's take a quick picture. Oh, sit down, sit down. Go for him. All right, let's get him in the water. Let's get him in the water. Here he goes, swimming off strong, Kyle. 90 inches. Thank you. Thank you for that guidance. Oh my God. Just as I thought. Any size, any fish out here, it's gonna be way bigger than anything that can catch on fresh water. Obviously, especially with a fight like that. That was gruesome. It's brutal. Uh, we are currently at Cafe du Bay, which is right next door to Bay Bay, where we had dinner the first night. Our friend Sam highly recommended this place, talked, 
in great detail how, about how awesome the food was. So we trusted Sam on his selection for Bay Bay, so we're back here. And we're gonna have a little bit of a breakfast, brunch situation happening here. And then uh, we're gonna go check out the Museum of Graffiti today and get some food and see how it goes. Uh, jamon Iberico on both of them. Um, this one had, what was that cheese? Oh, it looks like burrata. Stracciatella. Stracciatella cheese. You got some pesto. No. I mean, that. A toasted. You order one of everything, right? Yeah. Mmm. Oh my God. It's like a really perfect amount too. It's not like overdone with the meats, you know, where it's like, it's pretty balanced. It's one layer. Yeah. I think that's all it needs, really. We're maximizing on the flavor. Maximus. This is the one. Which one? The Padrino? That one's fucking good. <laughs> this is really good too. This is the one right here. For the, simplicity, but that one is, yeah. What is this? The tomate, the pan, pan de tomate. Oh. Dude, I'm gonna tell you something. This bread is, yeah. it, it might be the best bread that I've ever had on a sandwich before. But I am afraid that the only way that you can get this bread is in a place like this where they freshly make it. Which means that the only way to replicate this is to learn how to make bread yourself. Ooh, for how simple it is, that packs a punch, am I right? This is deceivingly simple, but oh. it takes a lot to make it taste this good and make it look this simple. What is it? Just, it can't be just tomato. Yeah, I think it's just tomato, good olive oil, some good mold and salt on top, That's and really like good the, bread. The, the ingredients just do their thing. Thank you. Caprichoso, that's what they call me. <laughs> Oh, wow. This looks incredible. It's vegetarian. This? Yeah. I can't have it. <laughs> I'm no problem. I'm not, a I'm not a vegetarian. You don't have to be a vegetarian to eat vegetables. I don't know about that. Don't be a fucking turd. Dude, I don't know about that. People who are vegetarians don't eat meat. Right? Am I wrong or? No, no, honestly, you're right. Am I not right? Fair is fair. Mm. Then don't eat this, it's, it sucks. I love the simplicity of this, of a place like this. You could get light sandwiches and a coffee to go and just chill out. This is a perfect little cafe spot, I would say. Um, Great logo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a nice little cross between like an all day cafe uh -huh. and like a lunch spot. It, it kind of rides that line, it's, it's great. <clears throat> I could I could I could do any of these for breakfast. <clears throat> uh, dude, I know this felt like a healthy start to the day. Right? This one specifically. I think the tomato bread is like what I would do for a the simple breakfast. Bread is that was fire. Seeming, yes. Good. Yes. This is the veggie. Yeah. yeah. That has a lot of flavor. When this came out. Uh, But I would like, it's fantastic. Man, I feel great. I'm not, I don't feel heavy. I don't feel bogged down. This is, this is kind of a perfect way to start the day, I would say. And it rhymes. If you've been feeling a little bit achy or a little bit stressed out lately, check out Very Heal because Very Heal is committed to getting you access to the medical cannabis that you need. All you have to do is sign up and you can go to Veryheal.com forward slash optic. That is V-E-R-H-E-A-L.com forward slash optic. And you can speak to a doctor. And after all, that's pretty much it. So if you want to save yourself some headaches, some money, and some time, go to Veryheal.com forward slash optic and get $30 off your first medical cannabis card today. Uh, we are headed to the Museum of Graffiti or the Graffiti Museum. Uh, it's my first time going there, so I'm kind of psyched about it. Let's see what it's all about. Miami's a very, very graffiti-friendly city. So this is a museum of graffiti 
this location opened about two years ago. Um, and so in here, you'll see a bunch of familiar people, sort of artworks um, as you come into the building. And so we have Ewok, HM, MSK, with this site-specific mural, uh, which I love and everybody comes in here and we talk about it, it's kind of a trip. You think about you know what it's like to paint graffiti outside. So we, we try to really influence people in, in overt and subtle ways to consider this as an art form. That's a very overt way to sort of say, hey, graffiti is an art form. You like it or not, it still is. And so showing the word art is overt, but you know, maybe subliminal in, yeah. in, in some ways as well. Yeah, so here, here it's really us pointing out the, maybe some of the injustices uh, handed down to some of these writers that can be severe. So one to three years, one to three years, one year, three years and eight months, and the restitution and the probation. Um, but what's not necessarily considered is the impact that it has on their lives to be incarcerated for that length of time. Uh, and also what's not considered is that it doesn't really stop anybody. Have, you know, there you go from there, you go cornbread, Tracy went 68, and we kind of get into the notion of, of continuing of tagging and what it's, what it's about, and some of the tools and the materials and the names, uh, the spray paint, and, uh, and celebrating tag, so to speak. So most people hate tagging. We love tagging and think that it's very important uh, to exist as a, as a form of self-expression and even rebellion and, and that it's beautiful. So yeah, so, so here it's a brief timeline of the, uh, of train writing. And you know, it's so important for our names to be seen by others and to move around. And so trains have always been a very special place to write. Uh, and it's a worldwide phenomenon. It's the, it's the pinnacle of doing yeah, graffiti yeah, yeah. for many. And so there's just these moments that we highlight. So as an example, uh, the formation of D30, you know, just one moment, um, you know, Ether, since we're talking about Chicago, being arrested and doing prison time in, in Melbourne, CMW, you know, painting a whole train, um, you know, 2011 when the train stopped being cleaned in Malmo and it was like a Style Wars moment in, in Sweden. So all these little things are, are sort of part of our collective history. And so when it starts, when they start to exhibit in the galleries from 73 on, the public start to consider it in a different way and writers start to consider it in a different way as well. Crazy phase two piece. Yeah, that's <laughs> never seen a phase two in person. So yeah, I think that's one of the cool things that we've been doing is trying to find these and, and exhibit them. Yeah. Loan them, borrow them, whatever, you know? It is like historian work, you it's know what I mean? It, it really is. I mean, every, every, everything that's been painted in here that we've seen is it's a vehicle for graffiti and I think it's the only kind of art form that kind of like influenced so many other art forms in terms of like surfaces and objects that are painted on to this day. You know, writers go into these industries to find work and then really shake it up and really change the way things look and make things so much cooler than they've been before, you know? And so you see some of this stuff, like, you know, Persuade's early stuff. You see some of my giant stuff. It's cool when some, when these, co the companies get it. Skate companies tend to, tend to get it more because they're run by skaters. Yeah, yeah. And so writers, many writers are skaters. It's another subculture. Sort of, you know, the subculture, they overlap a lot. And so they tend to get it more than anybody. You know, same thing, writers got into the tattoo world. Yeah. People like Paco Excel from the West Coast are seen from New York. Um, and it really changed the way tattoos look. There's abuse. And so this is put together by abuse. Oh, shit. So this is Mike Suarez, abuse, uh, his fantasy tattoo shop, right? And so we wanted him to design a shop just to emphasize what, um, Those little paper what happens when writers go to kind of go into this world. 
So this is Adrian Lee in 97. He used to have a shop with Paco Excel up in the Bay uh, when he still used to write. And he went on to become a crazy like yeah. tattoo god. Um, but you see, you know, the style is such a time capsule. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, just a way to uh, share all this information that we know. Yeah, yeah. And it's presented in like a way, you know, a lot of people kind of ingest information, you know, other music and stuff like it's, it's awesome, it's perfect. Yeah, we wanted to make it as easy as possible, digestible as yeah. possible, cool. visual, yeah. obviously, uh, but also with enough history and enough writing around it so you can really kind of take away the story that we want to present. Um, and then also for those that rather listen to it, you can come in and do an audio tour and just do the yeah. whole audio tour thing yeah. and kind of take it in that, that way, you know? As soon as we were walking out of the Museum of Graffiti, Juan walked across the street to take a picture of the front of the of the museum. And as he was walking across the street, I look up and right above him it said, a heavenly word. Okay, you've seen it in the Bible a million times, the word tacos. So I said, we're going, right? As soon as I look at him, he's like, what, we're getting tacos? I'm like, absolutely. We haven't had tacos since we got here. And we were curious as to whether or not Miami had a good, you know, taco scene because I was skeptical too. Thank you. Oh my God, look at that. That's different. Yes, it is. Ooh, the oh. onion on it. Mmm. Very good. Classic tasting. The, the onions really do make a huge difference. Yeah, that's what you would get as food is being prepared, prepared and the kids won't shut the fuck up, so you just hit them with one of those. Sometimes you just grab the, the tortilla de harina, put a little butter on it, a little bit of salt, mm. roll that up, hand it to the kid, shut the fuck up. Um, and it worked, I did. I did shut up. Beautiful. <clears throat> what a spread. What a spread. They, they, they. What I love about these uh, steak tacos is like they give you the knob of onion, you know? Uh, a lot of places don't do the grilled onion thing, like the Here, backyard this style. This is your Got a steak taco with a, looks like a little bit of grilled onions and a little grilled jalapeno. Added some more of uh, that green salsa or green sauce. That was really good. Mm. Yeah. My God. They season the food really well here. I want to try to get the video. I'm really excited about this. Next. Consomme. Yum. Mmm, the consomme is fucking good. Quesabirria is a, um, a quesadilla folded and then you add uh, any type of birria, whether it's goat um, or this, cabrito or uh, beef. Ooh. I'm just drinking the consomme, it's so fucking good. Mm. And you know what? There are no rules to traveling for food. If you see something that piques your interest, just take a chance and go in there and try the food. This is what we did in Houston, remember, with the, with the dumpling house, the trendy Chinese restaurant? It ended up paying off for us. Delicious, that place. Master. Yeah. Masterful. Masterfully done. Fuck. What? Hot. Good. Delicious. Yeah, <laughs> it was good. Yeah, it's good. What a pleasant surprise. Mm. Can you hand me a napkin? Maybe three? Three? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, G. My God. Mm. When you grab an Al Pastor taco, first thing you do is you throw that fucking pineapple out the way. You're insane. 
best part. It's like a, That's what makes it ice cream part. sundae with a cherry just whipping the cherry out. Yeah, I'm mm. psyched. And, and, and that's, the second that I, I, I looked at it, I'm like, wow. He said, I wouldn't go that far. And then immediately after you tried it, you were surprised. The, the, the skepticism around Miami food, like I feel, I feel guilty and ashamed that I was this critical and had this preconceived notion about this place not being like a, like a foodie place. World class. Five out of five we've, we've, we've hit. Yeah. So if we haven't eaten in a place where we were like, oh. True, that is true. Yeah, yeah. And you know, we went from little Haiti, little Havana, Italy, uh, Naples, now Mexico. I mean, the, the and Beirut. Yeah, Beirut. <laughs> Lebanese food. Yeah, yeah, Beirut. And then the cafe next door was, was different too. So like, yeah, uh, preconceived notions are out the window. So while we're uh, eating lunch, uh, we got got. They, they fucking stole half of our camera equipment, and uh, yeah.